All right. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Gingrass. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about my job, which is Equipment Specialist Series 1670, which I know so far we've only had one other ES up here, otherwise known as ES. Uh, there is going to be a quiz, so please do pay attention. And I'm going to call on somebody for the quiz questions. First quick over overview. I'm going to go over my organizational structure so you know the big picture of where I'm at. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the uh, engine that I work with and past usage and future requirements and why we need to know that data and, and what we do with that data. Uh, then something called the temporary work request. That's uh, part of my, my daily job as well. I'll get into a little bit of API and cataloging, RDS, and quality assurance RPT duties as well. Okay, organizational structure. From the uh, AFMC, we have the sustainment center to the uh, supply chain management wing to the supply chain management group to the squadron to my flight to me. <laughs> okay, this is the TF33 jet engine that I'm, I manage. And there's uh, approximately 5,000 unique parts on this engine. So I manage uh, all those parts. Not all of them are active. Not all of them are stock listed. But if it has to do with that engine, I'm going to have something to do with it eventually. Uh, there's 1,100 active jet engines that are in use to this day. And there's five different configurations. So all that data has to be sent to me, and i got to analyze it and interpret it. OK, my main job is using the D200A system, like Lee, Lee pointed out he uses as well, is to validate usage. And what that means is I validate what the field and what the depot did in the past. If somebody turns in a part, it's broken. They turn it to supply, I get that data. If somebody condemns that part, throws it away in the trash or DRMO, wherever it goes, I get that data as well. So what I do is I take all that past usage and I look for trends. And if the trend gets broken, that's when, that's when I step in and say, hey, well, why is this trend broken. Maybe they found something on base in a box that's been sitting there for 10 years. Your trend of four per quarter being turned in turned into 40 one quarter. Well, that's something that I would look at. And the reason why I look at all that data is so that I can predict the future requirements. Take that data and you take it quantitatively and you say, well, if I use 30 of these last year, I'm probably going to need 30 this year, depending on how much I fly. And that's all calculated in there as well. There's more to it, but that's the general gist of it. Uh, I also collaborate with the technical community. That's uh, the guys that really know what they're doing on the actual parts. They're the, the experts. That's the engineers. There, there could be a component improvement program, CIP, where they're going to replace an entire fleet of parts. And so every time that engine comes in for overhaul, they'll take a part off and put a new one on, a brand new part. Well, I have to make sure that that part's sustainable. I have to make sure that part's there when they need it. And then I also have to predict that, well, they're only going to be replacing these 100% of the time until they're all replaced. So I need to know when that's going to end, when it's going to start. And all that needs to be collaborated with, with everybody involved, including the loggies. Uh, tech order changes as well could affect my, uh, my usage. Just because it happened in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen in the future. So I have to look at these other, these other uh, pieces of data for the full picture and make my analysis based on that. And all that's going to do is it's going to predict the future and it's going to set a budget requirement. And, and it just sets the budget for future, for the possibility of buying parts uh, for sustainment of these, these jet engines. And it doesn't mean that I bought them, it just means that we're going to budget for the purchase of these if we need them. Okay, unprogrammed uh, temporary work request, that is something that I do here and there on my day to day tasks. Uh, for example, oil filter, kind of recently, I have one configuration oil filter here that I no longer have, they're gone, but I need one. Well, this jet engine takes a different oil filter, but it's just slightly different. The two different parts. Well, I'll do a, a special request to convert these oil filters to this one. And when I convert them, uh, that'll be on a 206 or a temporary work order, and it'll, it'll fulfill my, my, my demand need for that. Another reason why you might do a 206 or a temporary work request is uh, one-time repairs. Uh, I think uh, Lee was mentioning uh, insurance items or items that are not really used very often. But once in a while, you're going to need one. Well, I might have three or four of these sitting in F condition, which is uh, a bad, um, uh, it's a condition, a failed condition. It's no good, it needs to be repaired. Well, if I have four in F condition and none in A condition, which is a good part, eventually I'm going to need one. So I might as well repair that now because in the future I might need, need it immediately. So let's get these repaired on 206. 
okay, applications, programs, and dentures. That is basically me saying, here's the part that goes into this jet engine and this jet engine, but not in this jet engine, you know? So I gotta make sure that that part is properly where it needs to be in the system so that we don't over forecast for any future demands. Uh, programs is sort of like, I know the depot is going to repair this part. I know the depot is going to turn this part in. I know, I know the field is going to turn this part in, but not repair it. I need to know all that data. That's sort of like the programs. That it goes a lot further than that. And indentures is kind of like I have four four wheels on a car, uh, so the wheels are indentured to the car. That's a that kind of example of an indenture. I, I also catalog new parts into the DL43 system. D143C, I used to do that. And so any new part to the inventory for the Air Force for this jet engine, I will catalog that properly. RDS system is another system I use. It's a uh, reutilization re and, dis and disposition system. I basically, I validate the need for excess parts or retain them or get rid of them. And if I get rid of them, I need to validate the DMIL code, which, which is a, it's a, it's a way to ensure that the DOD parts are getting into the wrong hands. Okay, and the last thing that I do is quality assurance augmentee. What I do is I do some QBIs, like with Bruce, he, he's, he's full time, I'm, I'm just, I do a couple a month. And PEs, QBIs, I basically look at somebody's uh, paperwork, I analyze it, and I make sure that everything they did was proper. And a PE is a personal evaluation. I'll actually ask them questions. How do you code something? How do you email code something? Where's the regulations for it? Can you show me the process? And that's what I do, and I love doing it. And uh, you guys ready for the quiz question? Mm -hmm. Okay. What is my job title? <laughs> you passed. <laughs>